Welcome back to another combo video for my 52 frames photos. It's week 19 to 21 and I try to focus on macro photography in three different topics. Wide aperture, reflection and detail. I usually refer to our weekly brief as a topic or a theme of the week. But on the 52 frames website, they refer to it as a challenge, which I think is actually a more accurate term. Because coming up with a concept, shooting the photo, editing and submitting in a period of 168 hours is a challenge in itself. And most of the time, that's challenge enough for us. But then there are weeks where we want to challenge our skill set even a little bit further. And that was my ambition for this week's photo. This week I decided to go out and shoot a butterfly, macro, wide open without a tripod. And for those new to macro photography, macro is actually quite challenging. For myself, one of the most challenging genres. But shooting wide open without a tripod is added challenges. A long story short, and I did ask ChatGPT to work out what they think the uh, depth of field would be in these photos. And I'm not 100% sure if all the data I gave ChatGPT is correct. But long story short, your depth of field or the focus area is minute. It's mere millimeters. Even the shake of your hand can put the subject out of focus. A tripod with the can have its challenges and usually not used that often with um, moving subjects would have helped me quite a bit in this instance since the butterflies were really chilled and I could set up a tripod quite easily, especially where they were feeding. But being Dubai, I didn't want to push the envelope just too much and decided to shoot it handheld. Granted, I've got the equipment to assist me with this. I mean, I can't ask for anything better. I'm able to bump my ISO, which gives me a little bit more light. My camera lenses have some of the best image stabilization, which helps taking out that shake. So I'm not gonna say all of this was me. A lot of it did, um, a lot of the help came from my equipment. Running wild, nothing to lose Do you remember the innocence of youth? Butterflies and summer skin Lightning exploding through Roller coasters in your veins Do you remember the never-ending days? Every crush you ever had burned in your DNA With a sparkle in your eye Forever young Every moment this is life Take it as it comes Jump up and reach for the stars Having no regrets Forever and ever Always young Forever young We're here at the Al Noor Butterfly Garden. Uh, we've skipped the island part because it's past nine already. They only open up at nine o'clock. And um, I want to take my photo in the butterfly house. Problem is, it's extremely humid in here. So my lens is all fogged up. So we're just actually waiting for the lens to defog and enjoy the surrounding and look at all the beautiful butterflies. Hold on, it's here. Sparkle in your eye, forever young Every moment this is life, take it as it comes Jump up and reach for the stars Having no regrets, forever and ever Always young, forever young Usually we 
with macro photography, you try to boost the um, f-stop a little bit, go a bit higher, because your depth of field is extremely shallow. It works well with a lower f-stop for maximum light, but the, like I said, the depth of field has been extremely shallow. I am going for that f2.8 shallow depth of field today and see if I can just get some part in focus and the rest all blurry and dreamy. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get what I'm looking for, but let's see. I wanted a bright photo with summer or spring vibes. I also wanted to enhance the focus of the detail even a bit more. The white of the orange peel bothered me, thus I've spent some time to remove the distraction by blending it with the fleshy orange part of the fruit. I finished it off with a vignette and some more distraction and spot removal. Next up was Reflection. It's one of my favorite compositional tools to use. Outdoors, I tend to use glass of buildings and even water quite a bit for reflection. Indoors, my go-to is usually plexiglass. With temperatures starting to rise and getting a bit toasty outdoors, I decided on taking out my plexiglass and using that. I wanted to use one of the flowers I bought for a guest ca who came to visit and wanted to create a horse looking flower but with reflection and symmetry. Thus I had to go and butcher one of my favorite flowers so that it's only got half left. Put it on an angle so that I can get the reflection so it's got that symmetrical look that can then give the idea that the flower is whole even though it has been and taken apart. So I've decided to go for a white flower since the contrast will be the biggest. So what I'll just do is cut it off like that and then just go ahead and remove a few petals. Actually it hurts me to do this but anything for a good photo I suppose. Let's just remove those two. And then if I'm going to put it down on the first page, hopefully it'll create a nice symmetrical photo. Okay, so here you can get the concept of the, um, of the symmetry and the reflection I want. Uh, almost creating a whole flower, although not entirely. I might just play around with it a bit, get it a bit closer so it looks more natural perhaps. You can see my reflection in there as well. That's why I'm probably going to underexpose a little bit and um, shoot at around f4.5 to get specifically the pollen um, in focus, but the rest, especially the background, all blurry. Okay, so the thing with macro is ideally you want to shoot on a tripod but it's very limiting especially because it's a fixed focal length of 100 mm so what I just do is I bump my ISO a bit once again I um, count on the capabilities of my camera bump the ISO a bit, little bit the f-stop is quite low at 4.5 and um, yeah that should have and the image stabilization should have enough in it so I can shoot out of my head and then just play around with the composition a bit move the flower around and so on I 
I tried to shoot um, more where the two perspectives reflect on each other because it's a deeper darker black with less reflections about the about well of the environment. Um, so yeah, I tried to do that. So I got from this square, I've only got like that part that I can really shoot in. That's that deep dark black which will create that perfect reflection. The other thing to notice. Reflection from above and reflection from more eye level is a lot different. So I tried to shoot low as well to see if I can maximize the brightness of the reflection. The thing I would like to try and we'll see that in post. But I've currently taken the photo in landscape because obviously the flower is laying flat down. But I would like to go in post and turn it sideways so that it almost looks like a butterfly and just a bit more wonky in a good way. I must say, although I'm not a fan of the Dubai summer, uh, it does give me a chance to focus on still life, which is something I wouldn't normally do. And it gives me a chance to play around with my macro a bit more. With the lens, I use the least, but it's so, I don't know, there's something about it. It's a difficult thing, but I really do enjoy it as it gives another perspective to your regular everyday stuff. I also try to play around with some unconventional compositions where you cut off a piece of the flower, put the pollen more to the side instead of your regular rule of the or in the center, and play around with the negative space a little bit. Okay, let's go put it into my computer and see if I got anything worth submitting. As you can see, I've already flipped the photo to its side. With a black background and white flower, I initially went with a monochrome photo, but later made two other copies with different color tones, which I ended up loving even more. Once again, my trusty local adjustments tool. This is to make the flower pop and the background fade. Now, let's clean up some more distractions. Dust poker. Now let's clean that up as well.
The last challenge of my micro career was details, and I decided to dip my toe into the world of jewelry photography. I decided to photograph my engagement slash wedding ring. I've only got one, my personal choice. But in any case, I decided to photograph my ring. And I wanted to use black volcanic sand, which we got on a trip to Indonesia last year. I thought that the black sand could add texture and even contrast since it's that dark of a color. At this point, I would just like to send in a quick reminder that the photo concept I usually have in my head doesn't pan out most of the time. I would say 99% of the time it doesn't pan out. And that's usually due to two things. Either a lack in my skill set, which more often than not is the um, reason. And then the second one, the much easier one to use as an excuse, and that's a lack of equipment. And although I try not to use that one too much, stereotype of photography can be quite difficult, especially with lightning. I've seen my makeshift IKEA little light or little torch or flashlight can be problemsome most of the time. But up to now, I have made you. But do you think that if I've got um, the equipment, it might be better? But on that note, even if I do have the equipment, I don't have the skills to operate them yet. Um, and if I have to be honest, I think I'm scared. I, the whole flash and lightning and stuff, I don't know why, but it's not that appealing to set everything up every time for a photo. Um, maybe I'm just lazy, I don't know. But like I said, stereotype of photos can be difficult without the equipment or the know-how, especially the know-how. taken a few shots a few different ways and I ended up liking the backlight quite a bit it gives that golden hour on an exotic beach kind of look but I did use a little makeup mirror just to reflect a little bit of light back onto the um, diamonds so let's go into post and see how it came out It took me a while to decide on a color profile to amplify the feel of a late afternoon summer sun glow that I wanted to go for. My local adjustments helped me to emphasize the beauty of the ring. Like myself, after 13 years, it's got some character already, but decided to remove some of the obvious and distracting spots anyways. So much fun to dedicate three challenges to macro photography. I love using the macro lens. It lets me see the world in an entirely different way. Although it's not the easiest lens to use, in all honesty it's probably one of my hardest lenses to use. Thus every bit of um, practice is always welcome to see if I can improve my skill set a little bit more. In the coming week my camera is going to take a bit of a rest since the challenge will be all about phone photography and I'm going to add to the challenge and try to make everything, even these videos, dedicated to mobile photography or mobile devices. See you then and thanks for watching.